Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Norm MacDonald. Oh, 
all my friends would be, we go, we don't want to do heroin, I go, then we had this thing, we'll do heroin when we're 80, that's what we all said <laughs> back when we were young. But little did we realize, when you get 80, you fucking ain't gonna do no heroin, you're afraid of everything. <laughs> Because my grandfather's 80, motherfucker, you know. He's sitting in his chair. Hey, Grandpa, why don't we walk down the street to the store? No, why? There's a wind. <laughs> I went out yesterday in the wind and looked at my arm. Big fucking bruise. <laughs> you got bruise in the wind? Yeah. I'm not doing heroin, I've decided. <laughs> story, of course, is the, uh, Caitlin, Caitlin? Uh, damn, that's a hot piece of ass. What the fuck is he doing? But, I remember 1976, I'm that old, and, uh, I remember uh, when he won the, because uh, I'm from Quebec, he won the Decathlon, world's greatest athlete. Now, that would have been a good time to come out when they gave him the gold medal and go, by the way, I'm a lady. God damn. <laughs> the world's greatest athlete's a lady. <laughs> that would have been very good for the feminist movement. Now, <laughs> when you're 60, 65 years old, um, is there really that much difference between a 65-year-old man and a 65-year-old woman. Come on. I'm not sure the benefit. <clears throat> It's funny though, if you could just say you're a woman, because that's all you have to do. There's no blood test or anything. <laughs> they just have to take your word for it. You don't even have to cut off your cock or nothing. <laughs> you say, I'm a lady, and they have to believe you or they're bigots. <laughs> so uh, I was thinking, I, I would not want to be a lady. However, there is one instance in which I would become a lady. Uh, if I ever went to jail, like if they ever caught me, for a crime that I committed in the past. Like, I don't want to tell you about my past too much, but one time I, uh, uh, I guess I, I guess technically I'm guilty of manslaughter. <laughs> <laughs> Only technically, because I slaughtered a man. Like, it started, you know, just a fist and stuff, you know, a little, and then I ended up like, God damn, I slaughtered that bus, but I, I gotta run. And then I ran away. So don't, don't spread that around. But. So let's say they catch me, some guy going, hey, that's the motherfucker. You know, he's watching TV or some shit. That's that motherfucker that slaughtered my best friend. <laughs> Anyways, if I did, I would, uh, and I got sentenced for manslaughter, and the judge said, uh, anything you'd like to say? I go, yes, I'm a lady. <laughs> and then I would get to go to lady jail, where I would be enormously popular. <laughs> As I backstage, you know, on YouTube, watched uh, uh, what the operation they do. God damn. So she said, You want to see it? I said, I'd rather see a fucking ISIS video than that. <laughs> it's, uh, it's the, the operation is it's in its infancy, let's say. <laughs> so a lot of the ladies. Um, uh, don't change, they just have cocks. But I was... <laughs> like, when I was young, I thought I was a lady. <laughs> and I said to my dad, I go, hey dad, I, 
I, I have a feeling I'm a lady. I don't know why. Something tells me I'm a lady. And then he's like, what about your cock? I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I forgot I have a cock. That's how ignorant we were back then. <laughs> We thought dudes were got to do with cots and ladies were people without cots. But it turns out that's, a, that's not true. That's just nonsense thinking for the... Imagine the barbaric thoughts we used to have back then. <coughs> Scurvy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to be a scurvy doctor. That'd be a good guy. Come, got scurvy, girl. Here are some oranges. <laughs> I wrote some shit on a piece of paper, but now I can't read it. I write, I write very badly. I got to work on my penmanship. What the fuck that shit say? Oh, it don't matter, none. <laughs> but I do find it strange that he would change uh, his sex at 65 because I am 51 and my, you know, cock hardly works. I don't know, you know, I don't know how people sexually function. Like, it works, but it doesn't work like when I was 20. It's a young... Ha, you know, having sex to me is a young man's game. And uh, I don't want to be an old man, you know, trying to do a young man's job. And I don't got that ah, big thing that goes to do. That's the past. The present is like, you know, I'm naked and the lady's like, what's that said? I'm good. It's inflated a little bit. <laughs> You know what I mean? And then she tries to help, and it's like, you know, it's like, bendy. It's not good. It's not good at all for anyone. Cramming, I'm trying to cram. You know what I mean? It should be an easy, natural, but it's a young man's game, but it's not, it's not for a 51 year old to dabble in. I'm going to retire, my brother. <laughs> I decided it's just too early. It's not fun. You know what I mean? Like, it'd be fun if everybody was the same sexually. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'll tell you, I'm not fancy. Like, I got no, I just find a lady, and then I ask the you know, I ask, and then <laughs> if she says yes, I, I'll lie down on top of her. <laughs> there's no like uh, there's no accessories or odd uh, requests sometimes there is from the lady and I hate it and like one time I was with a lady and she's like yeah I bet you like she was so beautiful she goes I bet you like rough sex and I was like yeah <laughs> that's me <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm in a fucking wrestling match. <laughs> I have a hard enough time getting an erection, you know, during tax season. <laughs> and then I got one in a headlock. Anyways, whatever. You know. One of my members is like, why, why do you rape me? I'm like, well, you can't consent to that. Like, what are you talking about? You know? Maybe I'll sneak up on you and leave with a rock. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really want it, but I don't want to rape you. But I have any say, I want to lie down on top of you. And uh, it's pitch black. With like six fucking quilts on top of us. And then return to real life. And not mention it anymore. <laughs> Never been into the fancy stuff. I don't know how people must have, like gradually, you know what I mean? You don't just all of a sudden go, uh, 
You know, I only get off by getting my balls whipped. I clean up my ass. You know, you didn't start like that. You know? So don't go to any, like, thing. Because it, oh, it's a slippery slope. <laughs> Girl will try to put her finger near your eyes like, ah! Ah! I'm lying on top of you, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the future holds for me. <laughs> it's like when, you know, I don't, that's why I think couples should just quit, you know, just retire. Because you can retire from anything else, you know, from your job. You go, fuck yeah, Bernathy. You ain't gonna tell me what to do no more. <laughs> Never give me nothing, that motherfucker. I'm gonna meet Daphne. We saved up a little money and go to uh, the Bahamas and lie on a, uh, one of them uh, hammocks. <laughs> so you know, I can understand. <laughs> <laughs> or like I played rec uh, league hockey, you know, up till last year, and then I was like, "Fuck it, these boys are—they uh, got you know hard by. They're hitting me hard. <laughs> outskate me. Never used to be able to outskate me, but I ain't got the arches no more. Bust me up, you know. I lost four and fourteen. So I said, so I said, "Fuck it, <laughs> time to hang up the tackle barriers." <laughs> a sad day, but everybody understood. But with fucking, for some reason, I don't know why, people are proud of old people fucking. <laughs> Say, my grandmother and grandfather, they're 85 years old each, and they still have a wonderful sex life. And I go, all right, well, I never want to beat them. <laughs> <laughs> Eighty-five, you're trying to get an erection, maintain an uh, erection. <laughs> Eighty-five years old. How the hell do you do that? You know? And you know what? I'll tell you something. If you try to maintain an erection when you're 85 years old, you know what does not help at all? Eighty-five-year-old lady. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to help. <laughs> you know, you stand over there. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, you should use the luck. I'm retiring. But I'd like to thank the eight ladies who let me lay on top of them. It was nice of them. I appreciate it. But uh, I'm going to take up bowling. I always want to learn to bowl. So, um, you know, Ruth and I are going are gonna to take up bowling. Retain a little of our dignity. <laughs> Nothing worse than when sex goes bad and then they try to go to somebody and go, why, you should spice it up, like a marriage counselor. You ever think of spicing it up? Go, what's that, what? Yes, you should role play, you know? You ever try that? Go, ah, I guess. <laughs> All right. And then you're like, okay, Ruth. Here we go. I'll, uh... I'll be a cowboy, and uh, you be uh, just anybody other than you. <laughs> to, to get through this fucking masquerade. <laughs> that was a bridge and Pictionary, and those other things in life. <laughs> What's your team? Oh, of course, of course. Fucking great team. A great team. I picked the Blues last year in the uniform. <laughs> Not my team, but I thought they were... My team's the Canadians, goddamn. This is, a, you know, last couple of years, I had a chance. Big City Rangers took my goalie out, motherfuckers, two years ago. <laughs> anyway, so we, nobody wants to hear about that. <laughs> but it means a lot to me. I wish I... I wish I much would... <laughs> uh, but you guys need it more because you got the riots and all that. There's nothing that would unite the blacks and whites more than a hockey champion. <laughs> I have suffered now, but I don't want to say... Oh, I know, 
don't feel bad, Bill Cosby. That's what I'm just saying. <laughs> Stop. Bill Cosby. I opened for him once, and uh, I really liked him. He was a great guy. And he, um, it was a blow to me as a comedian on account of when I was a kid, I loved Bill Cosby, and I tried to emulate him and be, you know, try to like, be just like him, and it was, you know, I didn't like his comedy at all, but I tried to, you know, I admired him as a man. I did not care for his comedy. It never made me laugh. One guy, one guy was talking about Cosby, he goes, you know what the worst part is, is the hypocrisy. And I said, I don't think that's the worst part. <laughs> I'd say the rape was the worst part. Most rapists are probably hypocrites. But I think the rape and then the drugging before the rape would be second, and then thinking about doing it in the first place and, learn, and finding a guy that has that kind of drug that makes him rape people. So he had a whole bunch of things that were worse. The, the, hypocr the hypocrisy, everybody's a fucking hypocrite. It's like, it's like, you know when they do a, uh, they catch a guy for a crime and then they'll charge him with a little little one too? Like, I remember they, they got that guy, Richard Speck, he killed all these, these women, you know, all these nurses, and uh, nine of them, or something like that, 11 maybe. <laughs> raped and killed him, and uh, then, so they charged him with 11 counts of murder, 11 counts of rape, and one count of breaking and entering. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole defense was, the door was open! <laughs> All right, well, let's go. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, that's what I feel about Cosby, that the hypocrisy is the, is the least. Like, you, now, like a woman would never wake up in a hotel room with a Cosby cock in her face and uh, all the corrupt governorship and be going like, Hip hypocrisy! No! Cock in room 13 to 8. There's an act of hypocrisy happening in the It's being hypocritical. <laughs> Well, that's the worst thing than being a hypocrite. How the fuck is everybody a hypocrite? What the fuck? If you ever have a kid, you know, you're a hypocrite, what are you fucking gonna tell them who you really are? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad my father never told me who he actually was. <laughs> so I could love him. I mean, I'm like, oh, by the way, I know Steve. This is what's great about the country. Steve's an atheist. That's okay. Me, uh, you know, no, I believe in uh, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I've not, I've <laughs> tried atheism. I don't think I'm smart enough to be an atheist, and I don't think I'm strong enough to be an atheist. I think I'm just a little nothing. Without grace, I'm fucked. <laughs> but whatever works for anybody, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> really, really, it's a wild stab in the dark. Who the fuck knows? You know, I mean, it's not like God appeared to me or anything. I just, you know, my idea is there is either there is a God or there is no God. One of them is for sure true. <laughs> so you're either completely wrong or completely right. So, uh, you know, you got to take a guess. <laughs> so I, whenever I'm making a guess, I look at both sides. So I go, what, what do you think? I go, well, after you die, you get to meet your dad. Remember him? Go, God damn right, I do. He's the greatest man ever lived. Yeah, you meet him and, um, and Bark, Barky. Barky, my dog? My dog when I was a kid? Yeah, you'll be there. Barky, my dog. Now my dog. My dad says it's a stupid name for a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Is he good? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. 
And I said, I go, what about you? What do you think? After you die. The guy go, dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? No, you just smothered in dirt. <laughs> I think I'm going to talk to this guy for a second. <laughs> but don't put that in your pamphlet. <laughs> I guess I don't have pamphlets. <laughs> yeah, the street corner of pamphlet. Everybody! You! You over there! With the glint of hope in your eyes. <laughs> I want to tell you something. <laughs> Life has no meaning. You're born, you live, and you die. <laughs> you want to come talk about it for a while? <laughs> Get together with other guys, and we'll talk about you. Uh, everything's meaningless. <laughs> a lot of fun. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, goodness gracious. It's funny, you know, what's his name is receiving a Courage Award, Caitlin. I call him Caitlin. <laughs> Courage has a, a taken on a strange. <laughs> it's funny how they just use words. When I was at, uh, you know, fame, people that are famous now are these people that he's incredibly famous. His daughter, famous. For having a giant ass. It's so odd. Because when I, when I was young, when I was a young boy, and if a girl came by and go, look at my giant ass, people go, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Leave your giant ass with you. <laughs> they never go to you, I should be a millionaire. <laughs> ass that size. I can. should be the most famous person in the planet. <laughs> And then you think about people that aren't famous. Like I was, when I was a kid, I wanted to be an astronaut, right? That was my dream. When I was a little boy, uh, I saw the Apollo 11 landing when I was five. My dad showed me a little Philco we had. And I still remember sort of little images of it. And uh, that was the one that had uh, Buzz Aldrin, uh, Neil Armstrong, and Michael Collins. And they went to the moon and went on to the moon, except Michael Collins. <laughs> For some reason, Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong went on the moon. Like they landed on the moon, and a little ladder came out and went down. And then Michael Collins, the third guy, he stayed inside the lunar capsule. So, uh, and then he was like looking out the window. <laughs> They're playing golf and shit, <laughs> driving around in dune buggies. <laughs> Generally, fun time on the moon. <laughs> so then they return to the lunar capsule, you know, and they're nice guys. I'm sure they like Michael Collins a lot, so they try to make, you know, he's like, How was it, man? How was the moon? They're like, Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> There's no Earth or anything, you know, but <laughs> I prefer the lunar capsule, <laughs> to be honest with you. He's like, hey man, how about if I went down the ladder and fucking stepped on the moon for like five seconds and then ran up? Nope. <laughs> Why not? Uh, don't know. <laughs> A lot of these just don't know. But I was reading, <coughs> this is my point about fame. <coughs> I was reading about the astronauts and how many people had landed on the moon. It turns out 13 people have landed on the moon, but all. Uh, people know is Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, Michael Collins, maybe they know him. <laughs> then, but then there's nine other guys. So anyways, I was reading the last guy that walked in the moon. His name is Harrison Schmidt. Oh, Harrison Schmidt. Now, I'm sure that when he was on his way to the moon, he thought he was going to be a very famous person. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure he, because that's an incredible, you know, so I'm sure on the way up in the rocket, he was going, ah, they're not going to make fun of old Harrison Schmidt no more. <laughs> <laughs> From now on, I'll be Harrison Schmidt, the man that walked on the moon. I, I won't be able to buy a drink in this fucking town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
and hot and cold and running pussy for old Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Once I get back from school. <laughs> <laughs> but it didn't work out like that at all. <laughs> Harrison Schmidt is in a bar now going, Can I get a beer? <laughs> yeah, I'll give you a free beer. Harrison, come on over, man. Tell this guy your story. I went out and I walked on the moon. <laughs> give him a beer. Give Harrison a beer. <laughs> <laughs> Poor old Harry. Do you have a shirt just like this? Stand up so I can see. Go, what? 
about soldier, soldier or policeman? You got bullets flying around you? No, I'm telling you right now, it's, it's people that teach little children. They're the real heroes. Yeah, the others are the heroes that you think are heroes, but uh, they're not really heroes. Real heroes? Now, my uh, parents are both teachers, nice people, not heroic in any fashion. <laughs> and uh, as a matter of fact, I had never met a heroic teacher, and I had a lot. I, kinda, I was a student for years. <laughs> and uh, never once did I say to my buddy, hey, Barney, man, I was looking at Mr. Ricklebacker. <laughs> Up at just now, he's erasing the chalk. Board. Racing, do you remember earlier you put some shit in chat and now he's racing? I was thinking, God yeah, damn, he's kind of a hero. When <laughs> you really think about it, the way he fucking tells us what to do all the time, so we have to do it, or he hits us with something. <laughs> Now, to me, the kids in the, in the scenario are the heroes. Like, they seem to do the, the bulk of the work, you know? They're you know? <laughs> here, write 500 words on some shit you don't care about. Right <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to like, see? That's, that's, a, that's your contribution? <laughs> But you think about it, that's a pretty good job. A teacher, what job, how many jobs are there where you're like 10 times bigger than everybody that works for you? <laughs> Big giant guy that everyone's afraid of. <laughs> and what qualifications do you need? I mean, you know, let's say you're teaching grade five. What, you know, maybe grade six education would be enough, I think. <laughs> You know, you're like, you overqualified, you know, graduate grade 10 or some shit, and they don't understand the way you advance. <laughs> teachers. My parents were good teachers. <clears throat> I don't like them, but I don't like teachers. I'll tell you why I don't like teachers. The reason I really don't like teachers that much or schools is because I remember, I got a good memory. I don't got a good memory for for things that happened like uh, earlier. Like, like, I can't remember what that guy was talking about, shirt or something. <laughs> but I remember <clears throat> when I was three, four years old, is before I went to school. I don't know if you remember this time, but God damn, that was fun. Before school, every, and all, everyone was different. Like, all your friends were different than each other. They weren't exactly the same as you. And, and you had fun with them and shit. I remember before school, I would, like, go to Sean Kay's house. I remember this vividly. And I'd go, hey, Sean. you go, what? i go, I got a stick. I got a stick, you know? And then that'd be the whole day. We'd go out and have all kinds of fun with the stick. Then, the next memory I have is my mom dragging me to fucking school and me crying and shit. Then I'm in a room and then, like, there's a desk. I'm like, ah, what's going on again? Look out the window, see the stick, you know, you're like, can I get the stick? No! Hooked! Like, Finally, the weekend would come, they go, we're gonna. Give you things to homework, you have to solve some problems. And I go, listen, teacher, uh, here's the thing. And I was thinking, I'm five years old, and I got no problems. <laughs> That's the great thing about being five. No problems at all. And I say, well, you got something now. A whole fucking book full of them. <laughs> and you got to solve them. <laughs> yeah. They go, also, by the way, just so you know, these problems have all been solved thousands of years ago. <laughs> what? <laughs> I remember when my, my, in math, when my brother taught me uh, in homework, when they give you the 
problem if you can decode this. In the back of the book, they will have the solutions, but upside down. <laughs> Once you crack that code, <laughs> that part of the least becomes a, a lot easier. close enough to you to uh, <coughs> infect you. <laughs> you ever have guys go, just make up shit, like they're coughing in your fucking face, you're like, whoa, are you contagious? No! <laughs> you're not contagious? Nah. <laughs> I'm not contagious. You're only contagious two days after and one day after that. <laughs> are you sure you're a doctor? I actually looked it up. It turns out you are contagious, just so you guys know, because I'm a little bit of a hypochondriac. A little bit. One time I had a pap smear. <laughs> but I don't know if that makes me a fucking hypochondriac. I'm never going to get cervical cancer, they told me. <laughs> but, anyways, just so you know, um, if you have uh, something, I have something clearly. You're contagious two weeks before to two weeks after. So you're an optimist, you're very contagious. <laughs> but I, I, I can't get you guys. You're too, you're too far away. I believe you. I would feel awful, just awful if I you know, infected a room of people. <laughs>
the most we played for was like nine. <laughs> and then he rescued us like super fast, and he, he scored about 21 goals. Or something. And uh, so I was a defenseman back then, you know, this was pretty, Bob well, was around the time, Bobby Orr, but the, we were kind of defensive defensemen. So, anyways, I said, I'm going to stop one of the uh, Gretzky shots. So one time he took this insanely hard slap shot and I jumped over and it hit my shoulder and flew into the. And so, uh. Oh. No, nah, I didn't. What the fuck? I sank the goal. <laughs> so then, uh. Yeah. So then, uh, like 20 years later, I met Gretzky and shit and I told the story and he goes, Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> sure you remember that. <laughs> it's the highlight of my life. <laughs> I don't think it was a highlight of my life. It's a big, it's a big uh, um, <clears throat> tragedy in Canada when he left. It was like, um, remember when uh, the Twin Towers collapsed? <laughs> <laughs> Which I still think of as a tragedy. It <laughs> happened in September of uh, 2001, early 2000. <laughs> and that was what Gretzky's leaving Canada was like. You know, everybody's just stunned looking at the TV. And, Will everything ever be the same? Because <laughs> you gotta understand Canada. It's like, uh, dirty work. Yeah, dirty work. <laughs> you make a point. Hey, you got a, a you got a sleeve uh, on your uh, foot. You got a uh, tattoo. What, what's that say? What are the words though? Are they are they personal words? You don't want to say that. I could have lost my what? You could have lost your thumb. Oh, I could have lost myself. Wow. That's pretty deep, right? Let's try to figure that one out. It's on your foot. <laughs> is there a per is there I'm gonna try to figure it out. I'm pretty good at this. Is there a reason it's on your foot or could it be at anywhere on your body? It could be anywhere? I could have lost myself. Well, we could all say that. <laughs> I could have lost myself. You never lost yourself? For a little while? Yeah, me too. That's kind of scary, right? Uh, but you know what fixes it? Tattoo <laughs> parlor. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I like is Down Syndrome people. <laughs> I don't call it that other word that other people say because it's not right. It's, it's I mean, it's, it's a, it completely describes what they are, <laughs> but I'm not supposed to say it. You know the word I'm talking about. It's the it's the definition of like uh, arrested in development. <laughs> but um, I say Down syndrome. I don't know what that means. I guess it's some doctor named Down. I don't know. <laughs> That'll probably become wrong. But Down syndrome, up syndrome. <laughs> you know, who knows later, but. Uh, for now, I call it Down Syndrome. It's tough because, you know, I say Down Syndrome, and then people always think I'm a doctor. <laughs> and then they ask me to hit their knee with a hammer. I don't know why doctors. You'd think doctors would have stopped doing that a long time ago. But, anyways, they don't. You go in for a physical. Doctor takes out a hammer, <laughs> strikes your knee with it, and then you're like, ow! And then he's like, excellent! He writes it on his table. <laughs> he's 
but that's exactly how you should react when I hear your knee with a hammer. So anyway, it's paying just eighty dollars on the way out. <laughs> figure out anything then general doctors or whatever they're called. Just how many times have you had your goddamn blood pressure baby? Right? <laughs> 130 spikes over nine. What's that mean? Ah. <laughs> There's two numbers. We bought this big machine. <laughs> There you go, you pay Agnes $80, and, you know, who knows what's going on inside you. I like how they check for cancer, they're like, that's what they do. I'm like, cancer's so fucking stupid, it's going to be great. Right I know where cancer is, it's in your fucking ass. That's where, anything that wants to hide goes up your ass. Like, Jewels and diamonds and drugs and cancer. It's all, it's all up your ass. Drugs, you know? Because nobody thinks anybody's going to look up your fucking dirty ass. Like, the cancer was there no ass doctors. Turns out there are ass doctors, thank God. I'm going to try ass doctor. Motherfucker, uh, you should all get this uh, uh, colonoscopy. Do you read that? That's it? That's all? <laughs> one person? <laughs> you had one? Good, right? <laughs> no, I mean, they give you that Twilight drug. Yeah, that's good. Imagine a drug is so good that you don't mind them going way the fuck up your ass. <laughs> that's a powerful drug. Because you're conscious. You're awake. And there are four people are in your asshole and you're like... Hey guys, what's going on? Like, I don't know how that's not the strongest drug of all time. I don't think if you did heroin, you'd let a guy go up your ass. But anyway, whatever. I'm gonna be dirty. I don't know, should women have it? Do women have those? Yeah. Do they have yeah. Awesome? yeah. Which, which is it that women don't have? There's something up your ass, yeah. But women have colons, right? Yeah. <laughs> Well, you all should get caught asking me. That's my own public service. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank God we none of us have Ebola. Yeah, you know, we, we, we think we're in, in uh, always complaining, oh, oh, everything's bad. But, you know, think about all the bad things we could have. You know, we don't have no uh, uh, bird flu, swine flu, bird flu, <laughs> which all comes from China. It's, it's, all, it's all disgusting, but it all comes from a, some somewhere a man fucks a bird. <laughs> <laughs> sure, it's fun, you know, but it's not worth it, you know. They should have messages going. <laughs> we know it's a lot of fun. <laughs> but please use protection. But then you gotta catch the bird and roll a cot. <laughs> Swine flu, I don't know how you, because those fucking, I don't know if you ever worked with pigs, but I have. They do not like to be fucked. <laughs> I mean, no, I've never tried to fuck them. I mean, they don't even like to be approached by the mean, mean animals. <laughs> Anyways, this is a really disgusting topic. So I apologize for it. But that is how uh, swine flu and, and avian flu, which is, let's face it, bird flu. When you say avian, it doesn't fucking sound smart. You ever have doctors that do that? You ready to go, God damn, doc, I got this thing where I'm tired all the time. But you got, uh, you got uh, chronic fatigue syndrome. That's what it sounds like to me. You go, God damn, what's that? <laughs> chronic means always. 
And for tea, we use the tiger. <laughs> Syndrome means that something you can get out. <laughs> so here I pay Agnes here to die. Most doctors. I know, fun doctors. Some of them are good, but you know, specialists are fast doctors. <laughs> I feel ass doctors is like a new thing. Like it's, at some point, like your guy's like, all right, students, it's time to pick your specialty here at doctor school. There's a lot of things you could be. Brain surgeon. My God, be a brain surgeon? That's like a, a synonym for the smartest person in the world. People always go, what are you, a brain surgeon? Imagine the... Brain surgeon, all the prestige you would have. Yes, what do you want, Larry? Yes, that brain surgery. Does that involve uh, looking look at a guy's asshole? <laughs> Good God, no, Larry. <laughs> now, students, forget about Larry Sam for a moment. I lost my place. Heart surgeon, what about that? Hey, a heart has always been poetically linked to the very soul itself. Imagine taking a heart, beating a heart in your very hand and fixing it and putting it back. Take a man's. What is it, Larry? Larry, I can't remember. Yes, I was just I'm wondering about uh, heart surgery because I might be interested in that. Good, Larry. That's good. You're interested in heart surgery? Sort of. Uh, I was just wondering... Is, I don't know where the heart is. Is that close to the asshole? <laughs> what? No! Larry! I've told you for four years now. There's no such thing as an ass doctor. But anyway, thank God for Larry and his pioneering spirit. <laughs> you know? Maybe it was a little hard and shit, but it led to <laughs> some breakthrough. <laughs> I was trying to say I like Down syndrome people, and I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what I like. I like them for this reason, because life, it's very hard to be happy in life, you know what I mean? Like, life is kind of like a fucking sand you're always walking through, kind of. You know what I mean by that? Like, you're walking on a beach and it's slow, and you go, I should be walking fast with the sand. And I, I'm old, the sand is... I, I'll stop making me slow and I'm going to fall down into the sand and then I'll be, you know, and uh, but then once in a while in sand you will find a fleck of gold because that's where gold lives, in sand. And you go, okay, I got a little fleck, okay, that's, I can keep going. So that's, I think, like happiness, you know, that's my little idea. Now, um, people with Down syndrome, they're walking around with big fucking chunks of gold because, you know what I mean? They're always happy. Now, I'm happy uh, a little, like you guys, once in a while. Like, you know what I mean? Like when I wake up, and for, before I remember who I am, <laughs> like I'll wake up and go, God damn, I'm happy. That's my temper beauty pillow I bought. <laughs> That's the only thing I ever bought in my life. That tempur pedic pillow. <laughs> oh, I'm happy. And then, you know, under the uh, under my door comes sunlight and everything in my life. And then it's all over me. I'm like, whoa, what the fuck? Why did I slaughter that man? <laughs> you know, and everything goes, what? I'm not good. And I don't know where I'm going to go later or after I go. And then, I'm not happy. Anyways... At that point, when I'm in despair, I would like to have a dance in for it and go like, um, I like bananas! And I go, yeah, I never looked at it that way. <laughs> I like bananas too. <laughs> Say, why don't we get a banana, me and you? A yellow one, huh? Have it rub off on me a little bit. There's nothing happier than Down syndrome people. We're Down syndrome. I don't know how you're going to say it. Don't look that up.
I don't even know why people, you know, people pity them. They go, ah, look at them. Those down center people over there laughing. It's a rotten shame. You know, there's no cure for it. They'll probably die happy. <laughs> Problem is, they don't know the horrors of life. <laughs> I don't look at you guys like you're down <laughs> But yeah, I got, I had this guy uh, next, living, two, two doors down from down syndrome guy. I want to be his friend so he can say, like, bananas and shit, make me happy. And then his parents, look at his parents' parents, like, you can't be friends with him. I'm like, well, why? Uh, <laughs> whatever. I know the reason why, and you know the reason why. They thought I was gonna fuck him. <laughs> I guarantee that was why. You know what? When I was a kid, we'd bike around, let to take our bikes. Nobody would fuck us. <laughs> Why's everybody fucking everybody now? Like. We just take our bikes around. I don't remember anybody trying to fuck me. I don't know, maybe, but I don't remember it. That was the thing, recovered memory, like if something does fuck you, that you repress the memory, and then later, when you're an adult, you recover it, like, whoa! And which, uh, you know, I don't like that idea, because here's why. So, so I just said to you, I never, nobody ever raped me, you know? But I can't say that with any assurance. You know what I, mean? I don't know. Because maybe I forgot. So it's about 50 50. You know, man. <laughs> Acquainted with high math, you'll understand it's about 50 50. I got fucked in the eye. But if, it, if, I, if I did get fucked in the ass and repress the memory, I hope I never recover it. I don't want to ever fuck it. I'd like to just go to the grave with it. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be going to a cheese sandwich shop with my buddy. And then suddenly, you know what I mean? Go, what do you got to get? Cheese sandwich. What the fuck you think? Yeah, me too. It'll be fun, man. Doodle doo, doodle doo. Doodly -doo. Oh! What? Oh, you should remember something. What? Between the ages of four and eight, my uncle fucked my ass every time. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'll go live my life now. Uh. I I don't think I believe in recovered memories personally, or repressed memories, because it just don't make sense to me. I feel like if that happened to me, um, it would not slip my mind. <laughs> That's just what my common sense tells me. I think I would remember that. I think... I think I probably that's the only thing I would remember. Like, I would probably repress every other memory. You know I mean? People go, remember watching Old Yeller? No, I never seen that movie. Yeah, we watched it four times. That was not me. I think I'm a nigga fella. Remember the hypotenuse? Never heard that word. What are you talking about? The square sum of the hypotenuse square? The right angle? Never heard of it. I remember my uncle's cock. That's my, <laughs> my uncle's huge cock. It's probably that guy's huge. If I went back, you know. Yo, I think it's bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not be dirty anymore. Come on, come on, guys. Let's be, you know what I'm saying? You guys are gambling at all? Any gambling going on? Yeah. All right, well, I'll get off. I gotta get off. He keeps biting me. <laughs> he hates me. Okay. I don't want to talk about gambling. No! American Pharaoh! What? The race. The horse race. I was watching golf. 
I think that was the only person watching Gotham. I forgot. So I was watching Hitseko Matsuyama cutting. Well, what was his name? Pharaoh's... American Pharaoh. American Pharaoh? Huh. That's an interesting name, huh? Huh? Sounds like a fucking Muslim horse, doesn't it? I don't mean to be an Islamophobe, but I don't trust no fucking Muslim horse. He won the triple crown, by golly. First one since Seattle Saloon. Affirm. That's it? Affirm. Affirm? What year did Affirm win? 37 years ago. 37 years ago, which would be 1978. <laughs> God damn, so you're telling me that three horses won the triple crown within a span all into the 70s. Seattle Saloon won. Secretary won. And a firm one. Seventies. The seventies was the golden age of horses. <laughs> you know what the, I think the shame of it is? Imagine you fucking do this thing, but nobody's. You know, you win the triple crown. You're the greatest horse in the world. You win the triple crown, and you know you, you've achieved this incredible thing. But. Uh, you don't understand because you're a fucking horse. <laughs> it's a kind of a tragedy in a way. Like... <laughs> he wins the triple crown and he's like, anybody see any oats? <laughs> you know, you're a fucker, you're the fucking greatest athlete in the world. <laughs> well, how's that now? <laughs> I've never been on a horse because I did it a couple of times. And this is all I know about horse. If you bet on a horse, because um, this was what I would always happen with my horse. It would run out be way ahead, and then every other horse would pass it on the turn. <laughs> I go, where the fuck's my horse? And then, like, 40 other horses. I give a lot of uh, respect also to the uh, people who whip the horses. <laughs> I don't think the horse would run that fast <laughs> if he wasn't whipped. <laughs> I rode a horse once. I didn't know you have to kick the fucking shit out of it. <laughs> I thought they liked... <laughs> I thought they enjoyed like, having people on top of them running. <laughs> of course, they don't like that at all. So you have to kick them in the ribs as hard as you can. And then... And all the other horses went up a mountain, and mine just ate a bush. Like, <laughs> that's what they eat. Like, they just stop and start eating a bush. And, <laughs> and then you kick them as hard as you can. Man. Uh, you guys are great. Um, yeah. It was very kind of you to all come out. Um, <coughs> You know, um, I don't know what to say. You guys, uh, I try to be a better person. I, I, I'm very, uh, I haven't really been good at it, but I try. And you know, it all started after I stopped fucking. <laughs> because I found like a sort of a deeper love than just lying on top of a lady, you know. And uh, that love is just for uh, strangers, you know, because of course you love your friends and... Uh, you love your family, obviously. Who doesn't do that? Uh, but, unless you're like a psychopath. But loving, <laughs> stra loving strangers is a little harder, you know? Because um, it's easy just to just ignore our strangers. But, um, uh, like, I, uh, like, I try to... I'm not good, though. Because, like, for, like, there's a homeless guy that lives right beside me. <laughs> I have a home. <laughs> and that right beside me is emptiness. <coughs> That's what he's doing. 
<laughs> so I come out of my home, and then he goes, hey, you got a dollar? I go, I got no fucking dollar. And then a dollar falling out of my pocket. He goes, what's that? I go, fuck, that's my licorice money. <laughs> you don't get that dollar. Then I go and get some licorice. And I come back, and then he goes, hey, you got any uh, licorice or dollars or anything? I go, I don't got shit. Get a job! I don't think I have any possibility of getting a job. I hear they're looking for people who smell like piss and shit. <laughs> Filthy crack addicts, they, uh... Like, if you don't fuck it, money is spending on crack and shit. I love that. What the fuck is that? You give a guy money, he can spend on whatever the fuck he wants, his money. <laughs> Who ever heard of that, giving a guy money, and that has conditions on it? So here, I'll give you the money, but I'm going to follow you around. Because <laughs> I like, oh, can I buy this beefaroni? I guess so. <laughs> I said, homeless guys never want food or shit, you know what I mean? He goes, here's a sandwich, and you go, that's all right. I'm not going to change my life any of that sandwich. You got any crack or anything? Because <laughs> naturally they want crack. If you live on the fucking street, your pavement is your, you know, pillow. You're fucking you're hopeless. Yeah. You know? What do you want? You want something that fucking takes you out of your reality. You don't want here is a sandwich, just like a regular person eats. You're like, ah. <laughs> Thank you. You want to give them something? Go here is something that will make you uh, feel happy while shitting your own pants and pissing yourself. God damn, I'll take that. <laughs> what is that? That's crack. Makes you feel happy. That's who should be doing crack. Like us guys should not be doing crack because it would ruin our lives. Once your life is ruined, <laughs> crack is excellent. <laughs> So now what I do is I give them all, I, I carry $20, and I give them $20. So last month I gave $60, and then I felt real good. You know? I don't know where to buy crack or I would go and buy it, because I feel they would be real, they would be so fucking happy. You know, I'd be like, you're the greatest man that ever lived. You know, what's this? That's premium crack. <laughs> Damn, are you God or something? <laughs> Anyways, all I'm saying is, you gotta try it a lot, you know, because uh, it, it's all that it's all there is in the whole wide world, and um, it's you know easy to understand that. Uh, bad things happen, but, um, but it's, it's hard. You know, like, the scriptures say, love your enemy. That's almost impossible. You know, the Savior did it, obviously, when he was on the cross and stuff, but for us, for human beings, God damn, how the fuck you do that? You know, a guy trying to cut your head off, you're like, you seem like a nice fellow. You know, it's <laughs> almost impossible to love your enemy, but at least you love strangers, for God's sakes, you know? Oh, thank you. I love you, too. See, um, see, it's actually true that I love all you guys. It sounds modeling at you, but the reason is this. I get to talk to you guys and stuff and have fun and stuff, and then that guy lighted me. As soon as I go back there, everything would be different. My mother would go, why the fuck did you get up? My light you. I go, I don't know. <laughs> Where's that fifty dollars you owe me? I don't know. I, got I don't got it. I'll go to the ATM. You better fucking go to the ATM. I'll go with you. I, I 
got a little crazy on that fucking one thing. But, <laughs> but anyways, that, that's why sometimes I stay, uh, you know, too long. Because I like, like, love, you know. And if you love... talking about unconditional love, that's another thing very hard for people, you know what I mean? Almost impossible, like, because uh, condi- love, uh, condition because you're a human being, you know, you're not, you don't have the grace of God, like you can't, like, if you got, let's think if you went home and there's your wife sucking off eight black guys, you know? <laughs> it doesn't matter what color they are, but <laughs> I'm assuming you're racist. <laughs> So you come back here, racist motherfucker. So right. And you go, hey, I come home early to get a cheese sandwich. What's up? I love you, honey. This this condition is nothing. It means nothing. Of course, everything has a condition. And yet, and yet, when you think about it, how hard is it to love a stranger or a, or a a person that you think you couldn't love, when you look at a dog, love everybody. You know what I mean? A dog, I got a dog. Every dog I've ever met, just fur and then love. That's all a dog is. You know what I mean? You pet the fur and then love. And then, that's why I don't understand. People go, I don't like dogs. Go, what the fuck? And I don't like things that love me. I don't understand. But, my God, God damn, it's, it makes me, you know, I wake up and the thing, dog, I was like, eh, hey, as soon as I wake up, hey, dog, I love you, like, yeah, what's up? Oh, God damn, tater, and he licks my face, and I'm like, you're the greatest tater, and he's like, I love you, Norm, I'm kissing you, I know you are, man, let's wrestle around. Ah, oh, you crazy dog, here's a bone. You like a bone? Uh, uh, kiss me again, yeah, you kiss me again, play with a bone. Yeah, I'll kiss you again. Okay, get the fuck away from me. <laughs> the fuck, man? You gotta, you gotta get up and do shit. And then the dog sits over there and goes, that's cool, man. That was too much, that too much. <laughs> I'm sorry, I... I I'll sit here and stare at you, <laughs> and then the next time you, you call me over, I'll love you again and kiss you. How's that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so if a dog can do it, if I can... Dog, they got unconditional love. I mean, uh, Hitler had a dog. You think about that. There was a dog that loved Hitler more than anyone in the fucking world. <laughs> Name was Blondie, it went by the name of Blondie. And that dog would wake up and go, Where's Hitler? <laughs> oh, he's gone. He's gone, huh? Well, I like you too there, Gerbils. But where's Hitler? Is he coming back soon? He's at the wolf's lair. Not, he doesn't like wolves now. No, it's a thing. But he'll be back. He'll be back. Relax. Okay, man. I'm going to stand by the door until Hitler comes back. <laughs> then Hitler comes in, Hey, Hitler, hey, it's me! Hey, what's going on? Hitler's playing on it. Hitler, you are the greatest man in the world. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be bad if one of you motherfuckers just, you know, videotaped me saying that part. <laughs>
And then they go, what's going on? And you're going on, what, are you going on an airplane? You're in an airport. <laughs> you go, yeah, I'm going to go on an airplane. And they fly in the sky. And the guy goes, cool, man, cool. And then he goes, what do you think of Bruce Jenner? It came in there. <laughs> <laughs> They're very clever, those TMZ guys. Very clever. But I try not to say anything, you know, anything uh, controversial. Oh, you got other tattoos. You got tattoos on your wrists, too. Are those pictures? What's that a picture of? What is it? Oh, shit. You have nine tattoos? Yeah, you can get addicted to them, right? After a while? Yeah. I got some ink. <laughs> I do, I swear to God. I'm not going to show it to you, it's on my cock. <laughs> it's a tattoo of a larger cock. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get crazy, but it's black. <laughs> you seem to like it. <laughs> No, I don't want you racists to attack the stage and kill me because I like black people. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. They the same, black people, white people. I don't care if a guy is black, white, yellow, blue. I don't, I don't like blue people. <laughs> green. What about those people who like green? Martian, isn't it? I think a green person you're allowed to uh, shoot. <laughs> because it's clearly a Martian and they'll fucking dematerialize you because they have much better weapons. So you gotta have the draw. That's what I do. Anyways, I gotta go back there and get yelled at. And then I gotta go, uh, I'll see you out on the floor. Yeah. And, uh, good luck to you, and uh, I love you, boys. Thank you.